I uh, can trim it. So. Okay, yeah, just let us know. I don't think she's going to grade us on, like, our presenting ability. I mean, it's pretty hard to do this. Like, I was talking over Angie earlier, and it's just hard when we're on video and internet connections and whatnot, so I don't think that oh. she'll... All right. Figure. Hey, Leia, so we're team, this, we are team one, and this is the PowerPoint that we made for our project. Um, the first design uh, was designed by me, and it used um, two bevel gears to drive the four bar mechanism with the two paddle wheels that are symmetrical on each side. Um, this design later got improved and adapted, but this was the general layout that we wanted to use. Um, this was the final design of where the bevel gear got upgraded to a gear train of a 12 to 1 reduction. And the hull got hollowed out to make it lighter and keep it steadier. This was the initial concept that I came up with. Uh, it's very simple with, a, with not a huge boat base. It's just a simple platform. With the paddle in the front, with the thought behind that being that the paddle would pull the boat rather than since we it only had to go in a straight line, we didn't have to, have to steer it. So I felt that that would would pull in a straighter line, but uh, we had to make some design improvements on that, as we'll see later. So this was our uh, <clears throat> final solid works design. Originally, we didn't have any gears in it. And we had to add gears to slow it down because the motor sp spun faster than we thought. And then we had to add a second four bar because with one four bar, there was nothing constraining it. So it wouldn't run straight. So we added the second four bar. And uh, this is my initial concept. So I tried to do something a little different. Having the uh, motor be vertical instead, using some bevel gears and... Uh, just trying to make the paddles just two of them, one on each side instead of having one central one. And just using one four bar mechanism. And it's pretty close to our final design for this one. And uh, that's what our final SolidWorks model looks like. Yeah. Um, this was uh, a design A's final product. Um, anything that's gray uh, has been 3D printed. Um, the reason why I wanted to 3D print this was because it just sounded fun and never used them before. But there were problems doing it. One was tolerances, and the second, you can see at the bottom of the boat, it's warped. And I had to plug that entire hole with hot glue. Um, all the clear pieces are acrylic that were 3D printed, and or not 3D printed, sorry, laser cut. And the reason I used acrylic was because it's more precise and it worked out pretty well. And the... Uh, motor holder and the whole gear train worked just fine and then the pedal wheels again were just 3d printed uh, this was designed b's final mechanism on um, the paddle shaft pontoons were all 3d printed and then the gears platform and the four bar mechanisms were made from acrylic and they were laser cut and then the shafts were wooden dowels, and then everything's held together by nuts, bolts, screws, and sabrua. Uh, here's design C that me and Ryan built. Um, we 3D printed all of our gears and our paddles, and then we laser cut wood to make the body of the boat. Um, an issue that we ended up running into with the 3D printing is we had originally designed the gears um, to fit the dowels uh, with a little bit of leeway for the printing to shrink, but it ended up shrinking a little bit more than we expected. So we had to file down the holes of the gears to fit the dowels that we had. Uh, but overall, ended up going together really nice. Uh, here are the uh, velocity and acceleration equations that you gave us during lecture that we threw into VMware into a code and these are what we use to do the acceleration and velocity analysis for each of our four bars. Uh, this is design A's four bar mechanism. Uh, here are the 
numbers that we used to enter in our code to get out the values that we wanted. And omega two was the input uh, angular acceleration or uh, angular velocity. And we calculated that using the gear ratios uh, that we designed. Uh, here is the resulting velocities and accelerations for point B and C. And then point C has velocities in the open and closed configuration and accelerations in the open and closed configurations. This is design B's um, velocity and acceleration analysis. Here's the analysis we used um, to obtain the gear train output. So the, the motor input specification we got was 880 RPM. Um, that converts down to 90 or up to 92 radians per second. And then when you insert that into the gear reduction equations, that, that total gear train output um, for our design was around 10 radians per second. So that in turn goes into our um, angular velocity two. You can see the 10.238 there. And then the associated values with our geometric relations. And then here are our ex uh, acceleration values. And of the final velocity and acceleration values, uh, our velocity was around 12.8 and acceleration is zero because we are not accelerating. Uh, here's the four bar for design C. Uh, here are the given geometric values that we used. Um, the similar or the same omega as A. And then these are the velocity and acceleration outputs after putting them in the code. Uh, this is a Pew screening process. Uh, our group selected uh, a criteria based upon weight, sturdiness, complexity, the movement in a straight line and whether it floated or not. Uh, based upon those criteria, design A and design B had the highest net score and therefore they moved on to the Pew scoring process. Um, we weighted the criteria as 10% for the weight, 20% for the sturdiness, 30% for the complexity, 10% for the movement in a straight line and 30% on whether it floated or not. Um, based upon that, and then the mathematical scores, we scored them from one to five, and one was the worst and five was the best. And based upon that and the mathematical scores, design A had the highest score, and therefore it should be selected as the final design. And here are the references.